Okay, so I wrote it down. Give God permission. That wasn't really it, but I'm just going to go on talking and I wrote it, give it back. But I just wrote that there just to give some leeway to it. And maybe when I go to speak on it, the Lord will give me the full thing of what it really is. I'm coughing on that cold again. My daughter gave me a cup that keeps it hot, I gotta say. Okay, so. Um, yes. So, this is, this is God's temple. He said, know you not that your body is a temple of the living God? So when it comes down to that particular passage in the word of God, He's letting us know that there's certain things that we can't do to our bodies. We ain't supposed to tattoo our bodies up. Now, if you already got tattoos on you when you was in the world, that's different. But you don't go tattoo your body up again. And this is my opinion. And maybe I should get some scripture on it. I know I read somewhere in the word about painting up yourself. Okay, let me see. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Um, what, what was I saying? Um, oh, here we go. Say about that two. Leviticus 19 and 28. Let's go to the word. Let's get back up and heat up my coffee right now. Genesis, Revelation, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Exodus, Leviticus, what was that, Leviticus 19 and 28, let's see what it says, 19, Leviticus, Levitic, Leviticus, 19, 19 and 28, when I heard the truck. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. All right, let me find my little highlight here. A little highlight. And let me highlight. You shall not. Okay, wait a minute. You shall not make any cut. So there you go. It's in the word. Oh. I know I'm, I'm looking for a package today. So excuse me if you see me looking out the window. So. Y'all remember my little haul I did? I need those little, like, stickers that go across that you just stick on like that. I had them before in my Bible. Let's put this. Yeah. What we gonna put here? And 
and then okay tattoos tattoos that's two t's tattoos Put in the vinegars. Nineteen twenty eight. <coughs> okay. You put that there. So it said ye shall not Leviticus nineteen and twenty eight says ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. For the dead. So that you know how people put ta tattoos on them? Cutting is tattoos. Because you got to cut the flesh in order to put the tattoos on it. So you can't... You know how people die and they put their name on it or something like that? For That's why I say for the dead. Nor print any marks upon you. So you ain't supposed to have no kind of marks. Print nothing. So you ain't supposed to... In other words, point blank is saying, if somebody died, you're not supposed to put their name on it. Not even Jesus Christ. And if you just feel like you want to put the name of your person, yourself, or you want to put... Because my husband got his name, his his initials on him. His name is... his. He put his initials, TSJ, on him. On his arm. Now, when he was young, he was muscular, so it showed... But it's still there, baby. So that ain't what got me to him. I wasn't into no tattoos. Because other than that, I would have put me a heart right here. Like, or a teardrop with my grandmother. Those are the things. I just, or little rose right here. These are the little things that if I said, I was thinking about it. That I was going to get a tattoo and I was going to put a rose right here. Like putting, putting certain marks on my body because I feel a way... Or I like somebody. Mm -mm. My daughter Danielle's son put his name. I think he's he put his he wrote my name in his hand. I, I don't. I think he still got it on there. Last time I seen that, he showed me. He said, "You see this? You remember this?" I was like, "Yeah." He, <laughs> that's a horse. That's a story of another story within a, a story. So um, he um. Okay, so you, you, those are markings. If I'd have put a rose here, or I'll put a teardrop wherever, wherever. Those are markings. So you see it in the word. The word said, You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. It said, Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. So when Geno Jennings was calling the women hoes based on how they was dressed, they got mad with him. And he said, people can go around and call people, call women out of their name, and they laugh about it, and the women don't say nothing. They stay with the men. Here he is telling them what Jesus said, what the Bible said they were. And they get mad with him. And that's the truth. The, the enemy got no other choice but to fight against God. And if you got leadership, and when I mean leadership, I'm not talking about my church in general. I'm not talking about my church specific in general. If you got leadership that get mad with you because you quote the word to them, then they got an issue. That's the, 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 something wrong there. Why would you get mad with somebody because you quoting the word to them? Even if it's out of context, the fact of the matter is that it's the word. So now if it's brought into, now, now I had people that, that, that came to me and was quoting the scripture to me, but it was out of context. So I didn't get mad because they was quoting the scripture. What upset me is that to, to see that they didn't know what that specifically mean and they bring it in, in, they bringing it into our conversation to justify their wrong. If you wrong and if the Bible say that you ain't got no business getting married to somebody else, because it was never so. If the Bible said you ain't supposed to be getting no divorce. Because it never so. If the Bible said that if your husband or your wife want to stay with you. And you kick them out. Because it never was so. 
Now you want to get and you want to get mad with me because I'm quoting the word and telling you that this is what the words say, and you want to tell me no that yeah he it said that, but it also said only for fornication. But what is fornication? Isn't fornication a sin? So if fornication is sin, and you did the fornication, then you gotta go and repent. If your husband did the fornication, then he gotta go and repent. But that doesn't mean that you go and marry again. It did not say. That you can get married again. It did not say that you can go and interact with somebody again. I'm just using that point. I don't want to too much get into that because that's a touchy situation. But I can speak on it because I'm married. You see what I'm saying? And and what the word says, according to Moses, that give you the right to get a divorce, I'm there. But I didn't do that because. The Bible says that as long as that husband is alive, he is my husband. I don't care whether he go out there and get 50 wives. I don't care if he met, if he committed fornication with 10 women. He's still my husband. You see what I'm saying? By law, I can go and divorce him. By, by spiritual law, which is this Bible, he is my husband. You see what I'm saying? So now you want to get mad with me because I'm quoting the word. There's something wrong with your salvation. So do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Lest the land fall to whoredom. Now apparently he was talking to the children of Israel. Here we go in the Bible study. I told you everything is spiritual to me. Let me just throw this in there right quick. And, I'll, and this is all into my story. You see what I'm saying? So now, apparently, God was talking to the leadership of Israel, to the children of Israel, letting them know that you as leaders, you as dads, you don't go out there and put your child out there to make money for you because then what's going to happen, the whole city... This is, this is why I'm saying this is leadership he's talking to. Because that means that they're going to see your child out there prostituting. You see what I'm saying? And then everybody else going to do it. So, lest the whole land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. Now, wickedness going to step in. See, see what happens with prostitu prostitution, whoredom. And now we got a whole lot of weakness. Now the world is full of weakness already. So now you're gonna add some more to it. Okay. Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. He keep telling them, I'm the Lord. It's me telling this. So keep my Sabbath. He said, remember the Sabbath. That, that, that's a part of the of the um, Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We go to church on Sundays. Those that do go to church, I'm talking about my own. We go to church and they're in such a rush to get home so they can get to the pantry the next day. God spoke and said, I am God. There's no other God. No other God but me. No other God, he told the people. So that means that the people is putting other gods before him. And they doing it in secret. And he tired of it. And boom, he hit the church with COVID. Y'all don't want to serve me? I'm going to shut the church down. But anyway. He ain't going to shut it down in a lie though. Okay. So now. It say, regard not them that have familiar spirit. So if somebody out there want to be somebody in your clique that seem to be connected with that type of lifestyle, want to be fussing with you about what the word says, what it say? What it say? Regard not them that have, don't pay them no mind. Don't go along with them. In a sense, don't even, don't even. Recognize them. Hey, Siri. What does regard mean? As a verb, regard means. Consider or think of someone or something in a specified way. 
Do you want to hear the next one? Yes. As a noun, regard means attention to or concern for something. Do you want to hear the last one? Yes. As a noun, regard means best wish. Wow, let's cut it off. But we see. Hey, Siri. What does regard mean? As a verb, regard means consider or think of someone or something in a specified way. Do you want to hear the next one? Yes. As a noun, regard means attention to or concern for something. Do you want to hear the last one? Yes. As a noun, regard means best wishes used to express friendliness and greetings, especially at the end of letters. So this is to consider or think of someone or something in a specific way. So don't regard them. Don't pay them no mind. If they lead her, you give them respect, but you don't regard them. You don't think of them in a highly way because they have done stepped out of the realm of God. They done stepped out the will of God. So you still got to perform and present love to them. You still got to give them respect, especially if they're in leadership. But you don't regard them. You ain't got to hang out with them. Whatever they say, you ain't got to be a part of it. Because they're not even regarding God. God is the something that you're supposed to give attention to. So now, what they're paying attention to is that, fam that familiar spirit. Oh, it's okay. They can come on in here and be in the choir, even though they gay. They can come in and, and, and play the organ and on the drum, even though they out there drinking and smoking and living a sinful life. Or they can come and preach the word, even though they the biggest troublemakers in the church. We, we, don't regard them. Ain't nothing I can do if my leaders put people up there that's causing issues in the church, but I ain't got to regard them. I'll say amen to the truth of the word of God. But if you ain't living what the word is saying, I ain't even going to say amen. Because you're using the word to try to make yourself look good. And by the time you get off that pulpit, you're going to go right back in your devil, man. You ain't doing what, what you're preaching. Okay, so regard not them that have familiar spirits. Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Okay, so this is, let me see what this is that the Lord was saying. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any way, in any wise, rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon them. So you ain't sitting down at home hating them. You ain't sitting down at home rebuking them. And you ain't sitting down at home suffering bad things to come upon them. Thou shalt not avenge nor hear any grudge against the children of thy people. Lord, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So regardless of what they do, just like I said earlier. Even though they over here got these familiar spirits, even though they up there doing this and doing that, telling lies and whatever the case may be, and plotting and all of that, you're still supposed to love them. You're supposed to still treat them right. That's what I was telling you, man. So I don't care what people say about you. I don't care what they think about you. I'm still going to love you. Because it ain't got nothing to do with my salvation, what people think about you. Just like it ain't got nothing to do with my salvation, what people think about me. Only if I allow their thoughts to come into me and to tear me from serving God, that's when I'm having a problem now. That's when God has a problem with me. I got to put my, um, I got 33%. So, um, okay, so now let's go on.
So back to the, the point at hand. Okay, so So yes. So now I'm going back to the hand so I can end this video. So now she's getting mad with me because I told her that somebody told the pastor in so many words that she was wrong by getting her to go around calling people about this particular person or these particular people having COVID. She wasn't supposed to be, okay. This is another word, this is what I'm saying. Well, let me go on saying what I told her. I said, that they said she was wrong. She should have did it herself. Our bishop should have did it. Since Bishop knew, since Bishop is saying that the person spoke to him and told him, then he should have either, no, being that the person was supposedly had told him, then that means that the person, it came out of the person's mouth. And she told her leader, which that's who she's supposed to tell. She ain't supposed to tell me. You see what I'm saying? Well, I, first of all, I'm not a family member. So if I'm a family member, you know, I tell my family members, and then I go to my leader and I tell my leader, whatever the situation is, not even about COVID. So if, if she went and told her leader this, then her leader was supposed to tell the next leader, right? And then they was supposed to, I don't even think they're supposed to text people. But hey, if you want to do the texting, do the texting. Okay. I think they should have said, okay, we having a conference call at 8 o'clock. We want everybody on the conference call. Once everybody's on, everybody that's a member of the church and everybody of leadership, be on that conference call. You get on the conference call, just want to let you know that there's a COVID case going on in the church. And we are going to close the church down for 10 days. And even though we all been vaccinated, so it's not in the, it's, it's not, how, what's the word? Even though we all been, since all of us, that's the word, since since some of us has been vaccinated, don't know who, but whoever that is vaccinated, because the person that's saying it, which is leadership, I'm presuming they was vaccinated. I'm not sure. Well, however. So, because that's none of my business. So since, but you put it in the word in that way, since some of us, or if some of us has been vaccinated, right? It's okay. If you begin to get symptoms, that is whatever. That is, what's the word? I'm, I'm gonna use the word. That is treacherous or that is of concern. Then y'all go to the hospital, y'all go get tested, what, tested or whatever the case may be. Other than that, y'all do what y'all feel y'all wanna do. But what we gonna do, just we, we having this meeting to let y'all know that we'll be closing the church down for 10 days. And we're gonna sanitize the church so that way everybody be at ease. We're sanitizing the church. We're gonna go in there every other day and sanitize the church. Nobody's not gonna be in the church. We ain't having nobody in the church. We ain't having no services. For two weeks, our services is gonna be on the line. Boom, that's it. Nobody don't know who got it. And we as saved folks ain't got no business looking at people crazy when we get back to the church. Because they looking at you crazy. Because since I don't know who got it, I'm using myself. Since I don't know who got it, because leadership never told us. So when I get to church, 
I ain't going to be like, oh, who was the one that had COVID? Because I ain't come to church to worry about who got what and what's going on mm-hmm. and who's ever life. I came to church to give God praise because that's God's sanctuary. So my attention is on God, not on people's lives. That's why he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So everything that pertaineth to God, if we don't do it any other day, we should do it on the Sabbath day. Right? So... When I was when I told her that she shouldn't have did it, she shouldn't have had the leadership shouldn't have had you did it. They should have did it. And she said, Well, wait a minute. That's a fivefold ministry. I said, listen, we ain't talking about no fivefold. We ain't talking about no fivefold ministry. Hold up. Let's go to fivefold ministry. Hey Siri. What is the five? Five-fold ministry. A fairy is a type of mythical being. Or legend. Where, where should you get fairy from? I know I ain't saying the words right. Hey, Siri. What is a five-fold ministry? I found an answer. It's displayed on your iPhone. No, it ain't. I'm talking about the number... Let me bring it. Let me just look for it. Cause uh, we ain't getting our five. Here we go. Okay. So, as the head of the church, Colossians one and eighteen. Let's go to Colossians one and eighteen. I don't want it to be out too much. Let me go back here. Good, so I can be reading. I need to find my scripture. Okay, Colossians, that's New Testament. Colossians, Colossians 1 and 18. So here we go. 1 and 18 talks about Christ. Okay, so Colossians, as the head of the church, Colossians 1 and 18, which says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And in all things, he might have the premises. So now, it says here, he passed us his ministry in five key parts or roles, which is apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and pastors. Wait, wait a minute. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Right. So Ephesian is actually the scripture that speaks on that fivefold ministry. Ephesians four. Ephesians four, eleven through thirteen. So let's go to four. Ephesians 4, 11 says, And he gave some apostles, apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the perfecting, not for spreading gospel. I mean, not for spreading gossip, not for going around 
telling people business to the next person. So if leadership tell you to do it, you should have sense enough to say, no, 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 that's not my place, pastor or bishop or elder. No, I think that's for you to do. That, that, that's not my place. Because I don't want nobody to feel no kind of way. To say live peaceably with all men. I don't want nobody to feel no kind of way that I'm going around telling them, telling their business. So as far as that business is concerned, that's not for me. That ain't got nothing to do. That's the fivefold man. That ain't got nothing to do with the word of God. Oh, so-and-so got COVID. Praise God. Hallelujah. No. You can't even put it in, in the same concept. It says, the reason for you being an evangelist is to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. How are you edifying the body? That's the physical body. This is talking about the spiritual body. So how me calling up Sister Jane, telling Sister Jane, all right, so-and-so got COVID, so the church is going to close down. Mm-mm-mm. Here we go. Here goes Sister Jane. Oh, man, we got to close down the church again. Here we go. How's that edifying? How's that edifying? Now we got to get on the line. When people ain't doing nothing but arguing on the line and talking about every Tom, Dick, and Harry in so many words, feeling some kind of remorse because somebody said something because you don't like. So that's all what's going on. I texted my pastor last night, and I said to her, can we have Bible study and leave personal affairs alone? Okay. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and. Okay, so that, that's what it is. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children taught. Now, this is what this is what the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, and the pastors are supposed to be doing. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro when somebody can tell you something to do because you're intimidated by them. And how you intimidated is because you scared to say no. That's where the intimidation comes in at. You scared to say no. No. Somebody come to you and tell you, do this, do that. You know it's wrong. Or you know it ain't got nothing to do with you. Your Holy Ghost and your spirit is telling you that ain't right. But you're going to go on and you're going to go do it. Because the bishop said it. Because the pastor said it. Now you and your spirit is getting beat by God. And that person that told you to do it is sitting up there. Watching you do what they know they should be doing. And what they know is wrong. So therefore, to toss to and fro. That's what he's talking about. People can just come and just tell you anything and you go do it. It's going to turn out being a rap reprobated mind. Okay. Toss to and fro and carry about with every wind of doctrine. Everybody come along telling you this, you go on. Yeah, you may stand up and say, well, the words say this and the words say that. But here's the thing. You standing up for the word by going against the word. So if somebody say, I keep going back to this marriage thing. If somebody say, you ain't supposed to get no divorce. Well, the words say that Moses said we can have a divorce. But the words say also, as long as your husband or wife is alive, you bound by that husband. You bound by that wife. Okay, anyway. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness. There we go. People don't believe that the devil got some tricks. Cunning craftiness. They done sat there, cunned it together, schemed it together, got it all together. Now they come to you and tell you to do it. Tell you exactly how to do it. Witchcraft. Whereby they lie and wait to deceive. They sitting back waiting. Oh, I know who I can get. I can get advantage of them to do it. Because you see they ain't text me. They ain't even text me and tell me nothing. Ain't nobody text me and told me nothing about no COVID. They told me that um, we won't be having no more services on in, inside the church because they cleaning the, they cleaning the carpets and they, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up.
Okay, so let me, let me go to the text. They say due to church. Listen to what they say. So the person that texts me did not even tell me that it was a COVID case. And to be honest, it should have been told. This is leadership texting me. And this is what leadership texts me. But told the person that I told that they shouldn't have did it. To tell the person to, well, actually, actually, here you go. Leadership told the person to tell whoever it is that she got numbers for that this is what's supposed to be going on. Now, this is what the pastor said that she told Evangelist Odom to say to people. But Odom told me who had the COVID. Who had it. And at that time, church wasn't being closed down. She was saying then to me that it shouldn't be no secret and they should tell it and um they should they should sanitize well I'm the one who said well they should sanitize the church. I said they should sanitize the church and I said they should close down the church. That's what I say. This is what the pastor wrote to me. Due to the church, the churches, carpet, seats, etc. being clean this week, our services will be on our conference line. So she didn't even say nothing about no COVID. But but the Odom done spread the word. Now here it is, the pastor probably know what's going on, but she she didn't pacific pac, she didn't specifically tell me why the church. She didn't even say the church is being clean. Oh yeah, she said being clean this week. No, she didn't say the church is being clean. She said the carpet and the seats. Etc. Whatever that etc is, I don't know. So I told her that she was wrong for going about telling it because of telling it. Because if you told me who had the COVID, I mean you told the next person. I don't know who else you told. I don't know who else you told. And I ain't talked to nobody else she told. Because the person that that um I went back and told, because just like I said, I told that person. And I told that person while I was talking to him that I was kind of leery in telling it because it was none of my business. But I knew that they wasn't going to tell her the reason why. Because I was really debating it. But I'm going to tell you, honestly, I should have listened. Because the spirit, the first thing the spirit told me to do is don't tell her. And I kept going on. I kept going on. I kept going on. And in my spirit... It was. I was also going through that thought of, well, suppose they don't tell her and she go to church Sunday, and she, <coughs> and she don't know nothing. <coughs> now this person is always, is always, uh, careful. Keep she keeps her mask to everything. She talked to me with her mask on. She walked back and forth in the church. She always sanitizing, wiping down stuff. So she's always careful. But I was like, no, I'm supposed to go to church. And um, but I know the painter wasn't open. So now now I said, well, let, let me tell her. So I called up and I asked her, did she hear the news? I asked her first, did she hear the news? And she was like, no, what news? So I said, well, such and such. They saying that such and such. No, I told her that such and such got the COVID. I said, that's what they saying. And then I went on and comments of who said it and where it came from. You see what I'm saying? So now she she commenced to tell me different things that was kind of like weird. Started telling me about the Pacific person taking tests way before. So then I said, I said, well, the person probably had it way before the, before this particular time, before they got the results. This particular person. So when she hung up on me, she's now this is what the lady said. The girl said to me, she said that they was starting trouble between the lady, between these two ladies. Because why would leadership have this specific, specific lady call and tell people different things about her business? Because she want to cause problems. So I didn't really think about that in the beginning. But when she said that, I was like, really? She said, yeah, yes, yeah, sis. 
These two people is always at rivalry in the pantry. So why would you send this particular person to tell everybody, this other particular person, their business? And sure enough, that's what happened. When she got off the phone with me, she said, I'm going to call the person. This is the person that's supposed to have the COVID. And she said, I'm going to call that person. And something she said she was going to do. She didn't say she was going to ask them, did they have it? But, but, um, but, um, whatever she was going to ask. I can't remember what she said. But then after a while, maybe about 20 minutes later, she called me back and she said that the person said that they don't have it. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Why would they, why would they say that? I said, the person actually said that they didn't have it? Said, yeah, she said, ain't got it. She said that she don't know why they going around saying that. So now when I'm talking to down the person called me, I wasn't going to, now in my head, I, not in my head, I told the sister that was talking to me, I said, uh, uh, you know what, this don't make no sense. I should, um, I should text the lady. How did I say it? I said something, I don't know what I said. I should text the lady and ask her myself, do she have it? Or uh, I should, I can't remember how I said it. But when I said I should text the lady myself and see if she have it, but it came to me, no, that's not my business. I shouldn't downright ask nobody. That's just like going to somebody asking them, do they got cancer? Do they got AIDS? Those are those are diseases that you that that's really touchy. That that's up to the person to tell you. I say, no matter how much you may think that they have it, based on how they look or their symptoms, they could not have it because their body body is different. You know what I'm saying? And every disease and sickness affect people differently. So I got that out of my head. I said, well. That's wrong for people going around lying on the lady, saying that the lady said something and she didn't say it. So I felt I felt bad because I repeated it. And that's gonna teach me a lesson, not repeating people's things. Now, I said to Odom, I said, well, if it comes back that it's a lie, right? I will, how did I say? I said, if it comes back, it's a lie then that that means that just shows that just shows me that that bishop was right cuz he's the one that said that the lady had it and bishop was right that the lady did talk to him, talk to him but i'm thinking this is just me thinking cuz i don't have no fact on it i'm thinking why would that lady get on the phone and tell Bishop that she got COVID and then turn around and say she ain't got it? Now, unless her mind, because the lady, the sister that was talking to me, she said, sis, I know. But her mind, her mind, I said, wait a minute. I said, God healed her mind. I said, now I see why the Lord. Now, that Sunday, before all this took place, I got up and testified, which I wasn't going to testify. And I got it. The Lord made me sing a song and made me get up and testify. Because see, God knows all things. He knew I was going to testify. And the reason why I wasn't going to testify, because I don't go to church to perform. I don't have to testify on the first Sunday. Been silent for I don't know how long. Don't say nothing on the line. Don't come to church. And now I get there the first Sunday. Now I don't want to act like I'm all holy. I don't have to prove anything to nobody. Because I'm saved whether you see me or whether you don't. When the spirit leads me, we be on the line, and the spirit leads me to sing a song and 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 go and testify. I do. I'm not. I don't. I don't want. I try my best not to be in the midst of 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 of, of performing, because I'm not here to try to persuade people based on my performance to love God. You got what I got. So therefore, what you got like I got should make you love God and make you just go ahead and sing and make you just praise God. Just throw this in. I was on a pastor's 
um, Bible study last night, and she was talking about you don't have to be singing all these dead songs. You go on, and you the Holy Ghost will give you a song to sing, and when you sing that song, the Spirit of God will touch it, will come into the midst of the song and bless the service and people will get healed in the service and people will get delivered in the service and people will get saved in the service. That's the truth. These days say you're singing all these dried up songs. The truth. I said it already. When it's time to praise God, you sing in a praising manner. When it's time to worship God, you worship God in a praising manner. That's why he said, those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Not in a song. Not in a, oh, this, that's a worship song, so let me sing that song. Because that's going to get everybody in the worship. No, you got to have worship in you. In worship. Those that worship God must worship him in spirit. So you got to have that spirit in you in order to be able to worship him. Otherwise, it's just a song. The song sound good. The song touch you. Now you all in the spirit. But as soon as the song stop, you just as dead as a doorknob. So that's why your worship is just going as far as that ceiling in that church and bouncing back. Even if it go, who is to say it went that far? So you must worship him in spirit and truth. So you've been lying for the whole week. You done been scheming. You done been causing confusion with people. And now you getting around the communion table, now it's communion service, and now you want to be all in the spirit. You want to be shouting. You want to be breaking your hand off. God ain't coming in that mess. Lord Jesus. People just aggravate me with their foolishness. Trying to play God. Can't play God. God knows all things. He right there in your house, listening to you on the phone, telling lies. And then you want to get up there and say, a, a liar won't tarry in his sight. Well, then you must be, you should know that you ain't nowhere in God's sight. He'll spew you out his mouth if you look warm. He prefer for you to be hot or cold. So I guess you should know he done spew you out of his mouth. The, 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 the Lord going to let his word whip the people. They going to be up there saying it, call themselves preaching it, quoting it. And whipping they self with it. So, she got mad with me. She started talking about the five-fold ministry. Well, this is what the five-fold ministry. I said, this ain't got nothing to do with no five. Gossiping ain't got nothing to do with no five-fold. And gossiping. Then what you call it? The lady didn't tell you. So, why are you going back telling it? But she got very upset with me. Yes, she did. She got upset with me. She didn't want to be bothered with me. She said, all right, all right, I'm getting off the line. And da, 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 da. All right, we got to go. We had to on Bible study. That was our Bible study. And then you know what happened? She got on the line. And she started talking about our conversation. I say, look at this. I said, look at this. Okay, we're going to end this. Let me tell you something. I'm going to end it with this. If y'all don't know nothing, if y'all don't know nothing for a surety, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I'm glad that when I said it, I didn't say it based on a fact. And I only told that person. And that person went to the to the horse's mouth. And the horse's mouth said, she ain't have it. And we got on, we had Bible study last night. And it was crazy. People was all over the place. And I know people was feeling something. I know the lady that was supposed to be accused of having it felt some kind of way. And she felt so, she sounded so different and confident in herself and everything. I was like, that's right. Feel confident. If you know you ain't got nothing and people going around lying on you, that's right. You be confident in the God of your salvation. 
And the lady that I was talking to, she was like, how she said? She used the word intimidated because that's what I used. I told her that she was intimidated by, I said, people, something, something we was talking, we was saying. And I said, yes. No, I said, you don't be taking on people's spirit. I think that's what I said. And she said, I'm not taking on no, nobody's spirit. I said, yes, you are. I said, you're taking on the person's spirit because look how you acting. Look how you talking. I said, you, 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 you're intimidated now. No, I'm not. Do you know what intimidated me? I said, come on, tell me what it is. And she said something. I can't remember what she said, which I got to go back and listen to it. And then she said something else. I said, oh, wow. I said, so I guess you don't know what intimidation means. I know intimidation means somebody intimidated my, my definition of it, which I, which I looked it up. But my definition of it before I looked it up was that because I be, I get intimidated. I, in some aspects, I get intimidated. People intimidate me. So the, but the only thing that people didn't do, people do not intimidate me to lie. The intimidation coming for me to go along with things. If I have this particular mind to do something, a person can intimidate me, may even put a little bit of fear in my heart and make me be like, all right, well, you, you right, you right. Well, I won't go that way. So now, the reason why I use it for her, when she get intimidated, is that maybe there's certain people that don't intimidate her, but there's certain people in that church that does. And when she get intimidated, then she goes along with what's wrong because she don't want to go. She's afraid to go. Now, you got to understand, being afraid of things don't necessarily mean that it will hurt you. See, fear runs in different types of categories, but it still means the same thing. It depends on how you're using that word fear or how it's being demonstrated will bring out the enlightenment of what the word means. So she's not afraid of them. She, she already put that. I'm not, I'm not afraid of them. I'll cut them. I'll do this. I'll do this. She'll fight in a minute. If it came down, push came to shove where she had somebody threw a blow at her, I believe she'll hit him back. So in that concept of being fearing somebody, she not. But the fearness come in where she be intimidated is where she don't want to to um, hurt somebody's feelings or she don't want to get that person against her because she got got a ride in their car or she want to stay close to them to get their business. So if they come to her and tell her to do some devilment, that's wrong. It may just be a wait. Let me put it that way. A wait for her. Because now they pulling her into their realm, into their world. So she's so quick to be intimidated by them. Well, child, I I I'm going to go do this. Well, you know what? You should do this and you should do that. You know what? You're right. I am. I'm going to do this. I'm going to call them. I'm going to say. Because a lot of, and the reason why I say that is because. A lot of time, me and her would be talking. Not a lot of time, but before, because we don't talk that much now. Before, when we would talk, and she gonna do this and she gonna do that and blah 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 and blah. And as soon as I open up my mouth and I say, "Well, you know what? I, I don't care what people do. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm not doing." Just like I said to her yesterday, I said, "Well, I'm not coming. I'm not coming to church. I'm staying home for ten days." She said, "Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do." See what I'm saying? But I guarantee you. She gonna open up her mouth and say, "Well, you know what? Y'all should just close the church, or whatever the case may be." Okay, so I gotta put this intimidation somewhere. Okay, so we gonna put it in there. So that's what I meant when I told her that she was intimidated. She took the word out, took only part of the. Hey Siri. What does intimidate mean? Intimidate means frighten or over a someone, especially in order to make them do what one wants. Okay. That's what it is. So that's when intimidate, because she do whatever people want her to do. She don't stand on her ground. She don't, um, she don't, um, stand for the word. When she talking to me, she all about the word. But when she get... When it comes time 
to do what she said. What she says she gonna do, she back out on it. She was supposed to go. Yeah, I'll give you an example. She was supposed to go. She was supposed to go and um I I you know, you'll you'll see my videos on Back to Church Sunday. So you go and get the understanding of what I'm saying now. Cause I don't want to really go into it. We have the Back to Church Sunday, so before it before it gets before it was supposed to get started every Saturday before the back to church Sunday we're supposed to go out and give our envelopes and whatever so this particular Monday and Tuesday it started out with the Tuesday or the Monday yeah it was the Monday it started out with the Monday of stuffing the envelopes and everything we was gonna go out that Monday because the Tuesday they were supposed to do the um they were supposed to do the pantry so I picked the um the Monday. So we all get there. So the, I'm waiting for Michelle to come because whatever she had to do, she wouldn't get there until 11 because we were supposed to get there at 10 o'clock. I was going to get there before 10. And I said, we get there early. We 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 um we stuff the envelopes. If you ain't done, stuff them. And we um go out at 10 o'clock. Michelle let me know she couldn't make it. So I let everybody know that was supposed to be a part of it. That um, they could that that we gotta wait till eleven o'clock. I don't know why they call it back. They say you set it back because back is going backwards. So if it's supposed to be ten, you go back to to nine. I set it back to nine o'clock, but and up. Well, I have to I have to set it up to ten o'clock. I have to change the time, and instead of ten, I had to put eleven. That's up. I don't know why they say back. It, it just sounds so confusing and backwards to me. But how they say it, I, I set it back to eleven o'clock instead of ten. So now during during all that time coming up to to eleven o'clock, I started noticing crazy things started happening. I started noticing Vanish Odom. Now I'm supposed to be Vanish Odom. Supposed to be going with me. I gave her. She was given. There was some issues giving out the um. The, the 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 flyers printing out the flyers and all that stuff there was issues with it but I had my own printer so I, I printed out my stuff and I printed out well no I printed out my stuff so I guess the administrative the administration was supposed to print out the flyers to for everybody else now this is outreach right it didn't have nothing to do with the missionaries even though the missionaries could have been a part of it they they supposed to be helping. It didn't have nothing to do with the, with the evangelists. It didn't have nothing to do with the elders or whatever. It was outreach. We all coming together in a whole to give out these envelopes and go get some soul some souls saved, right? Bring them into the church. Cause our bishop is always talking about we ain't got nobody in the church. So this is what we gonna do. We are gonna go out from house to house. And we going to give these envelopes out, right? Even if we got to mail them out. Take down different addresses and write them down. That's all. How many times people get mail from people they don't know? So when they open up this envelope, they get a, 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 a mailing, an invite, a flyer, the church program, the church calendar. They didn't even want to give them, give the people the church calendar. Why you don't want to give the people the church calendar? Why? What is so secret about people knowing what's going on in your church? Because you don't want nobody to come in there unexpectedly. But anyway, so th this is where I'm saying where Odom. I'm using all this to let y'all see as an example how Odom was intimidated. So now, now we're getting close to eleven o'clock. She comes over to me. Well, you know what? I'ma stay. Do Michelle need somebody to babysit? I was like, I don't know. Cause I'm already outdone. Cause I'm already hearing this person backing up. And the missionary already ain't doing it. The deacon, I don't even see. He ain't even show up. And everybody's sitting in their little corner together as a clique, plotting against me, telling everybody whatever it is they want to tell them so they won't go out. And sure enough, all them people that got envelopes did not go. It was just me, Michelle, and Kershaw. 
And I found out later on that it was said that if they go, they better not go because it's the pantry. And this is the pantry time. And if such and such come, I guess from the Board of Health or whatever, whoever them people come when you got a pantry, they come and you're not here, it's going to be some problems. But this is a Monday. Pantry ain't till Tuesday. You see what I'm saying? You're supposed to give out, you're supposed to give out the food on a Tuesday and you there on a Monday getting everything together and all just sitting around minding everybody's business. So since you're just sitting around minding everybody's business, put an envelope in your hand and go stand on the corner and give out the envelope. And I was saying, people would start talking about the elder couldn't walk around the same elder that's supposed to have the COVID. Can't walk around or whatever. I said, wait, she ain't got to go. I said, she could sit, get a chair. Even the mother, which is a missionary, they could have got a chair. Bishop, pastor, they could get chairs right out there and, and everybody take a corner. Somebody stand in front of the church and give out these envelopes. Oh, it was a big thing. So that's why I said Odin was intimidated because I guess they give money. And I think at the time she wasn't even getting the money, but she got intimidated by whoever it was and she backed out. And she tried to give me her envelopes. I was like, uh-uh. I said, I got my own. No, no, no. She didn't try to give me nothing. I found out later on that she gave her envelopes to Michelle. And Elder Robinson, Elder Robinson, right, Elder Robinson did give. She came over to me. She said, well, she said, here's my envelope. She said, I was going to go, but I'm feeling kind of dizzy. Now, I don't know if it was the truth or whether it was a lie. She said, I'm feeling kind of dizzy. So I'm not, I said, it's okay. I said, it's okay. So I took her envelopes. I think she only did like 25. I think she did 25. She didn't do 50. Because everybody was supposed to get 50. And they that, that was what I was saying. They was having issues. They didn't want to print out the 25 letters. They didn't want to print out the 25 flyers. The program. All that stuff. They didn't want to do all that. Not the program. The program. Um, calendar all that so I went on for about for about two months I went on and kept doing it and then after a while I ain't gonna lie you know I guess it got kind of you know the cold came in the heat came in whatever it was I got discouraged to be honest I got discouraged and I stopped so that's what I mean she got intimidated and she stopped so I'm gonna end this video here with that saying people need to mind their business but this one is don't let nobody intimidate you that's the name of this video or don't be intimidated by nobody like y'all have a blessed day bye